The legato works in a really weird and kind of awesome way, so I wanted to go into a bit of detail about that. When you're changing notes, I mean, there's usually a bit of preparation for the note change. Like, you might do a bit of a crescendo or a diminuendo or, I don't know, just there's things that you can, that you do that help give that shift more, more meaning or something like that. So you could include that preparation in the note change sample and then you'd be even further behind. You would like play a note and then play another note and then you'd have to wait half a second for it to actually get to the other note. The thing is, all those repeated notes could serve as preparations for shifts. Here's what I mean by that. Here's a shift from F to B flat. Now here are some notes in the style of oscillation strings. Listening to them side by side, you can hear how the shifts and the repeated notes really fit together like a glove. When you crossfade them, it almost sounds like one recording. In order to crossfade the legato samples into the swells smoothly, there's a lot of stuff that has to go on behind the scenes with the script. And it's pretty cool how it works, so I just wanted to go into a bit, a bit of detail about that. So first of all, just to backtrack a little bit, let's say you're not doing legato at all. If you play an A sharp, for instance, you would get this. And then let's say you play an F sharp, then you would get this. Okay, and then let's say you played an A sharp and then an F sharp, you would get this. Okay, now let's say you turned on legato, but you didn't turn on the legato samples quite yet, then they would sync up. So this one would start part way in. And if you were to start the new note partway through a beat, however far you were from the beginning of the next beat is how long it would take for the new note to fade in. Next, let's add the note change samples. Uh, let's say you, let's say you added the new note partway through the second, like pulse, the second beat. However far you were from the next beat is how long it would take for it to fade in. And then once you did get to the next beat, once you do get to the next beat, then it plays the next note from, from there. And then of course this has to fade out and there's a little bit of a fade there that the script has to do. And then next, volume-wise, if this is the same volume throughout, then, I mean, let's say you were to put it on, on the first beat or something, uh, you can see it's a lot louder and it would, a lot louder than the swell. And so it would really stick out. So depending on which beat you add another note, um, this will be louder or softer. So like here, it'll be like this. And then each beat, it'll get a little bit louder. And then once it gets to the middle of the swell, It'll start using the loud legato samples. Okay, so oscillation strings is figuring out all that stuff with the crossfades. The next question is, how does it figure out which uh, legato samples to play? Let's say you've, you've played a chord, and then you add a note to it. So you see it shifted up from the D to the F, and that's because the F is closer to the D. And if you made this an F sharp, then it'll shift down from the A. So in this case, whichever, whichever note it's closer to, it'll shift to, which means that if you went like this, 
and they kind of go inwards. Now, the thing is, if you add a note that's above the already played notes, then, well, this one is closer to this one, so it should shift down from there. But at the same time, it would be kind of nice if this went here and then this went here. Because otherwise, if the A is diverging downwards to here and up to there, and then the D isn't going anywhere, it just doesn't sound quite as good. Now, let's say you had three notes above the already played notes. Then this would go to here and here, and this would go to here. And now, again, if you had a note in between the notes, in between the already played notes, I mean, um, this would go here, and then this would go to all three of these. So that's how the voice leading gets decided.